it cap. It's been a while. This tournament was supposed to end, to end at the end of the last year, but then some scheduling difficulties with teams came in between. And then, of course, the little thing called the Shanghai Major Qualifiers, but, well, it's also a good thing, because that means after qualifiers, Just after all of the shenanigans took an end, we are here with some more great Dota for you today. Yellow Submarine versus Hellraisers in a lower bracket final best of three matchup. The winner of this will face up against Pro Dota tomorrow at the same time, so definitely tune in for that, but... Well, let's not waste any more time before we dive into the draft. Let me introduce my co-caster first, though. It is SB Revolution 5, also known as Revo. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm doing really great. excited I'm to be really here. I mean, we've seen the metagame I mean, shift the meta over the past, shift, uh, over four, the days, past uh, four days, or five days, I guess, of the, days, uh, of the uh, uh, open qualifiers, open and, whatnot. qualifiers and whatnot. And it's and showing. It's Showing. You see Lone Druid you getting banned Lone out Druid if you told out. us that before the qualifiers would have been saying, okay, okay, you're going to troll with your bans, that's fine. But he's really sh turned up to be a strong hero. Surprisingly enough, we're actually going to see Tusk, a hero who hasn't been picked like all year, you know? Never picked, this guy. Well, <laughs> save for pain, really. I mean, we don't see these heroes at all uh, these days. But yeah, it's. Uh, I, I guess we have seen less of them, maybe? Yeah. Uh, we, and we, we see them picked up around. later, yeah. sometimes. Uh, they're, they used to call Batrider the unnerfable, and now I'm believing that it's Tusk. <laughs> Unless they uh, change it so you can't put allies in the snowball ever. Yeah. Okay, that's something new. That is new, yeah. I mean, Centaur Warren's actually one of these heroes that I've been wondering about ever since I know of the Slaughter. Because these, these heroes yeah. are kind of similar, right? I mean, both have blink a weak stun initiators with the crush as well as the hoof stomp. Since our Warner has a little bit more uh, utility for the team with that stampede, able to get out of trouble, able to get everyone in after an initiation more quickly. Um, but and, he does have less um, speed on himself yeah. in the early game. He doesn't that have that true. sprint that he can always activate. Now, he is tankier as a result, which is very nice. But you generally are picking Slaughter to be able to get in and out quick and initiate without the Blink Dagger sometimes. Yeah. Of course, you still want the Blink Dagger. Centaur is much more reliant on... He has to have that Blink. If he doesn't have Blink, he's going to be just walking in and they're like, oh, look at this fat Centaur walking up towards us. Let's turn around and walk away. That being said, though, if you have a Bane already on your team, that's yep. about as easy of a setup as you can get uh, for a Centaur Hoof Stomp even before the Blink Dagger can come out, or even the level 6 with Centaur just being able to use that to run in and close the distance, but yeah, as a result I wouldn't be too surprised if we see the Bane rotate down to the bottom lane every once in a while to try, try and make something happen, or, or even the other way around, both Bane as well as Centaur are making their way mid. Um, to yeah, try I've and always there. been a fan of... I've been a fan of that for a long time. The Brain Sap being a great nuke in the early game, also allowing you to trade hits really easily. Uh, even getting a value point in Enfeeble can be okay. Excuse me, I got a little something in my throat there. Yeah. Uh, we are going to see Beastmaster from Yellow Submarines. So uh, are we thinking this is offlane Beastmaster and support Tusk? Uh, yeah, kind of four position support roaming Tusk by the looks of it. Yeah. Beastmaster in the offlane, just very solid lockdown later down the line. Uh, useful to have and... Don't really want to give that over. Not that Hellraisers were looking at it already having picked up the Centaur Warren themselves, but they already have the Bane, which is a strong knockdown that goes through BKB. And Beastmaster is one of these that can stop that from uh, from channeling uh, Tusk already as well. One of the better heroes up against the Bane, actually, is just be able to either punch him, snowball him, or even snowball the hero that he's targeted to interrupt, uh, interrupt the Fiend's Grip. So they, they have some tools to deal with that later down the line. And it also gives you a, a bit of split push, a lot of vision as well from the Hog, which is so, so important in these kind of games of Dota. Yeah, it's like a free observer reward that you can also adjust if you kind of leave him in the wrong place. I am a little surprised to see Hellraiser's ban out the Invoker here. I know he's a very strong hero, but with Bane and Centaur... <laughs> ah, excuse me. You have a lot of setup for Sunstrike. Nightmare into Sunstrike is amazing. Uh, Centaur, stop. Uh, you remember time. way back in the day, it was a Star Ladder tournament where it featured very prominently. We saw Centaur, Shatter Demon, Invoker as like a classic combo of if we get a disruption, we get the kill. Pretty yeah, much. Pretty much. Uh, and so I'm a little surprised on that. I was expecting that kind of combo, but he is a very strong hero, and Yellow Submarine... Uh, Die. Could be thinking of picking him up as well. And Hellraisers clearly have something else in mind. They'll also get the OD and the Death Prophet banned out against some heroes who got extensive reworks in 6.86. In fact, I originally thought OD was absolute trash. 
Turns out he's pretty good. Yeah, just need to be able to right click and then everything will be fine. Problem with him is, of course, that you have very little, uh, very little escape and tank ability. So if you do get jumped on in the middle lane, you have very little to actually defend yourself with, yeah, unless you have TP cool. rotations coming in. And that four second astro imprisonment, even the level one, can give Five you the time seconds. for these rotations to actually be effective. So you just just have to play it right. But then. Uh, if you can make that work in this timing window before the BKBs can come out too, you do so, so much work on that OD. But yeah, we're not going to see it this time around, neither the Death Prophet who has seen some extra play in the last couple of days. So, a lot of emphasis on these mid heroes. W what leaves it actually? I mean, there's, there's still a Shadow Fiend, if you want to go back to that a little bit old school, there's still a Lina, which Hellraisers do like to run, I want to say. Not 100% sure, but uh, yeah. I want to say, yeah. So Vengeful Spirit also getting the ban out. That's been something that kind of sprung up as a trend at the end of December for um, the CIS teams mainly. I feel like it's fallen off quite a bit, but it is still uh, really nice, especially against the Bane and the Centaur, just to be able to swap people out. Yep. So. Razor. The Razor, okay. Radiance pick. Well, that, that's another one of these materials that can just kind of dominate the lane. So... Yeah, and... I'm not so sure it's going to be mid. It could be safe lane with the Bane okay, support. Yeah. Nightmare into Link. Yeah, could also be very Pretty dangerous. scary. The, the Just thing like is you though... go to sleep, you wake up, and all your damage is gone. <laughs> I think it's still there up against the Beastmaster, who will be able to take the Nightmare off himself with the boar, so maybe it's not as not as easy. So to expect Damn, him to be mid with that go. Bane helping out up against whoever Yellow Submarine want to pick up, even if they, even if they go for someone like Viper now, which is still left in the pool, another one of these mid-dominating heroes, then... Um, yeah, he might be susceptible to that kind of gank attempt because yeah. I mean, uh, there's only so much that you can do up against all that physical damage going the Razor's no, no, way. No. And Viper obviously not being as tanky with that as big. he is to, uh, to magical damage with that Corrosive skin. So, yeah, I wouldn't be too surprised. Dazzle though, being a p first support pickup, your secondary support pickup, if you, if you will. Uh, it's a hard fight position there for Yellow Submarine, looking to uh, keep Radiant that from happening. Hit. Whoever they want to pick up mid, they just yeah, just have to dazzle there, able to rotate in, get the Shallow Grave off, and turn it around. This is an interesting pickup for sure. Uh, Abaddon has risen in pubs. Uh, I've played a lot of him on NA. Now, keep in mind, a lot for me is like three or four games. But the fact that you can activate your ult when you're stunned is really yeah, really good especially against long duration bkb piercing stuns like beastmaster uh five seconds so they basically realize they can't stun you and running him as a core is very strong however Resilient looking at hellraiser's time. lineup i guess they're running him as a support unless they're running centaur as a support yeah. which is awkward or centaur as a yep. mid or something and that's even more awkward, you know. Do you actually see a potential duo offline there with Centaur and Abaddon being very hard to deal with, actually? Centaur, just with your forest shield on top of him, how do you even approach that? I mean, right now you have a Dazzle there to support, so all this task could maybe spend some time in the bottom lane, but... Yeah. Well, do you really want to go snowball on top yeah, of a Centaur who can just stomp you, who can double-edge you? And the double edge also great to just trigger the aphotic shield to get an immediate burst damage out Radiant if you want it. So it's mm -hmm. potentially very dangerous offlane combination that I have not seen pl being played, but that I can imagine being very, very strong. And then you have a stable lane there, Bane, able to stabilize the middle lane up against the Queen of Pain, able to put a lot of extra pressure on Ten top of her that Razor might not be able to provide himself. And then all you really need is a, uh, is kind of a safe laner that can hold his own. And yeah. you're golden. Pick a dark I do Pick like that. Yeah. The big problem I have with it is that you are putting two melee I heroes up it. against the safe laner, and if they just pick a ranged carry here for the safe lane, which they may have already done in the Queen of Pain, uh, it will give them an easier time. Not an easy time, but an easier time against them. Uh, even like something like Medusa would be fine up against that lane. Can just turn on the mana shield and zone them out with the snake. Uh, but we'll see what they pick up. Uh, we do get the PL banned out as well. So it looks like they are going to rely on Heavy Burst yeah. to kill off Five heroes, and PL would be very good against that. Okay, oh, how is going with the Enchantress? Something we... I feel like we haven't seen it as much on the EU teams. I know the NA teams have been running it heavily. Oh, yeah. I I've seen one game with IX Mike playing that hero and just being super YOLO, of course, on it. And oh, my God. Worked please out. nerf. 
<laughs> oh, that was yeah, <laughs> that was so ridiculous. And yeah, that does look like a core enchantress here to me, to be honest. And that can be a bane to deal with, no pun intended. But that, the only that thing they really have to stop good. her is uh, Queen of Pain at the moment with her heavy nuke. Yeah. Even Tusk's yeah, Walrus that. Punch will be heavily slowed down, so he has to actually connect with that. And with Enchantress's speed, she can generally walk away before Reserve that even time. happens. Yeah. So. Well, five more seconds for a little submarine to maybe pick up another solution that it's going to be Lycan, and, well... I like this. Do you, I mean, up against Enchantress, all you really have is right clicks too, but then at the same time, you add so much push, so much physical damage up against everyone else on the side of Hellraisers that you... Uh, that you can just leave the Queen of Pain to deal with the Enchantress because everything else can deal with otherwise. And yeah, yeah. the push will be able and to help you uh, yeah, take away the space from the Enchantress. The other thing is, if you're in your ult form in fights, you can generally get in close to the Enchantress and diminish her damage. So yeah. that will help out a lot. Of course, you don't want to pop your ult and then run away from Enchantress because you're probably going to kill yourself that <laughs> way. But... I saw it last night. I forget. I think it was Ryu Borez who tweeted it and said, uh, "Playing against Enchantress is yeah, like a long distance cool. relationship. The farther away you are from her, the more it hurts." <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, there's some legitimacy to that for sure. Yeah. So I'm excited though. I I was running uh, mid Enchantress for a while, and my pubs hated me because you know, why are you mid? Go well, to the jungle. Yeah. You stupid sprint. But <laughs> on, it, on getting the bracket, fast levels happen. on her can help. Yeah, and on my bracket, they're like, what, middle enchantress? I got this, gets cocky, gets killed, whatever. They could never oh, beat me to the runes yeah. because they balance move speed. Oh, okay, yeah. enchantress did get pulled award. This could be offlane. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, figure that out in a moment's time as we are getting into the game. If you're just tuning in, welcome. My name's Dragon Drop. I'm joined by SB Revolution 5, and this is Yellow Submarine versus Hellraisers. Hitbox Live Elite Cup. Low bracket finals, actually. This is the second to last series that we have. The best of five grand finals will be tomorrow, but for now, see both teams, or at least one team, looking to secure the jungle and only the enchantress here from Hellraisers, placing a ward, seeing everything that's going on. Yeah. Nothing will come of this. So, yeah, let's take a quick look at the lineups. Of course, no one is, or almost no one is using the proper name, so we'll just. Probably call them the way they are tagged up. Yolo Warrior, YW here on the top, playing the center, and that is Uba. Or Ivan, is his real name, I believe. Meow, that is Afo Ninja, playing the Razor. 06, not quite sure who that is, it's currently playing the Bane. Goddamn, down here in the bottom is the Abaddon. That leaves Probably Enchantress. under shock. Yeah. I, I just can't be bothered, to be honest. Yeah, I, I understand. can't be bothered. <laughs> I'm, On I'm the sick. other side. I'm, I'm casting oh. this game when I'm super tired as well, just from from being sick the whole the whole weekend yeah. essentially, and then I can't be bothered honestly remembering two sets of names. But yeah, uh, the game is on. I'll I'll leave Yellow Submarine over to you. Yeah, we've got Anba on Yellow Submarine's Tusk. Nort will be playing the Dazzle. Over here on Lycan, we will have at underscore at. Uh, no idea who that is. Once again. Yeah. And uh, we'll have uh, music notes on the Queen of Pain. Very fitting, of course. And uh, Nicaril is going to be up top on the Beastmaster. So, in terms of lineup, I feel like Yes has a very solid lineup. But Hellraisers can definitely get a lot done. I do like the Queen of Pain against Razor, though. That's going to be a pretty easy matchup for the Queen of Pain. As you can see, she gets drained, she blinks away. Yep. And this music note is actually Go Reds. I know, I know that much. Just ah. for... Uh... He's playing mid now. Normally he's playing support, I believe. But with Nort and Anbar definitely being stand-ins here, they kind of switch up the roles a little bit. And uh, at at should be Artus then, the looks of it. Okay. Yeah. So and Anbar, uh, you mentioned to chat that it was a stand-in in the lobby. Actually, is an official member of the roster according okay. to their EK page. Someone said so. Well, then that's a just for those of you that were worried about yeah. two stand-ins. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Never mind then. One stand-in. Yep. Oh, well, more enough. So we're good. So Enchantress has found herself a centaur on the bottom lane. That's going to be very helpful. Uh, actually gets the stomp off on Amber, and gets a lot of damage in there. In fact, he'll be using his last tango for the moment. I mean, this is the problem with Enchantress. She hits for 58 damage, and she has 335 move speed. This is no boots. Uh, to put it in perspective, Dazzle has 305. Yeah. You are running him down every time, and I believe your creeps... 
are sitting at very similar move speeds, at least. So. Well, 320 on a Centaur is also quite decent. And yeah. you also have uh, the Abaddon sticking around in this general area, too. He actually has an Iron Talon just to be able to, I don't know, do what? I mean, he stacked up the, the hard camp there, trying to farm it up a little bit, perhaps, or slow, uh, knock it down, just to make sure that the Enchantress can get a creep, clean up the camp quickly, go back to the lane immediately. Yeah. And also, he can eventually, once he gets a few points in the shield, uh, slowly clear stacks. It's not going to be anything too impressive, but he will be able to do it at least. And uh, they are trying to harass down this creep, of course, Enchantress. Uh, Resummoned it, and I believe that refills its health, right? Uh, or... I don't think so. Oh, okay. It, it refreshes Apologies the timer, that's for sure. But I don't I actually haven't, hadn't really noticed it before. Don't think it does, but okay. I may have just been mistaken. We'll there. have to keep an eye on that. And yeah, she does have the heal though, not skilled it just yet. But Abaddon, of course, can also heal up the creep if of necessary course. with yeah. the Q of his. So. And he may have come up and done that, and I just missed that. Because I remember the creep being low, but no big deal. Up top, what do we got? We got the other warrior centaur. just swarming up. It's an actual centaur, not just a yeah, yeah. one. Yeah. He, he's Team just farming up together, yeah. Yeah, together with the Bane. Obviously, Beastmaster doesn't want to go anywhere near that. He's managed to sneak up level 3, though. It's quite nice. And actually, yeah, they <laughs> can try and deal with the board. There's a Nightmare now, full up from the Yellow Warrior with the Stomp. It's gonna let the timer run out as much as they can just to get that extra damage and looks like they might actually be able to burst him down. He's cutting up north through the trees. One more right click should do it here. Anyone can get in range? Ah, oh, the self keeps him alive a little bit longer. Got a but... Well, if they need it. <laughs> Playing a little bit of ring around the rosy there, so trying to dodge the uh, trying to dodge the axes, but they finally draw the first blood up so in this lane. And yeah, that's exactly what we were talking about in the draft. Nightmare setup into the stomp, into the double yep. edge for the extra damage. Plus the brain stab. Obviously, you use it on the on the ball then. But it's also a very smart play there. I mean, just take out the ball first, just to make sure that the nightmare can actually come out, can come out, and that Negril isn't able to counterplay it. Yeah, counterplay. They got have found here? the start. Yeah, they find Stacks. the Abaddon here. Snowball. That's the Aphotic Shield down with the wolves, trying to right click him down with a tier two. Yeah, and Dia to Abaddon Sahad, Mimul down in bottom, yeah, and Chandra's just doing fine. Bottom tower. You have to be very careful around Abaddon, because if you get him down to 75 HP, he can turn around, miscoil you, Please and deny himself. Uh, so you really don't want to spend a lot of time chasing him. Also, because of the shield, you can't really dive him. He will win pretty much any exchange there, so... Radiant top tower's hurting. Up in the top I'm not too sure what he'll be building, but... Uh, maybe just some supporty items. Radiant yeah, top. I've been going uh, Vlad's into Drum or Santanyasha in pubs, but again, oh, I've been actually, top lane stun. So. Queen of Pain here comes in to try and help, and now the Bane is a lot of trouble. Will be reckoning down up by even teleporting up top. Now Yellow Warrior does not have enough mana for stun. Does have a mango though if he needs it, if he wants it. And now actually tries to go for Anba. The Sonic Wave will miss, but will not be enough to actually secure them the kill. As the axes from Nicarol are enough to do the job anyway, but still, it's a long, big, big cooldown down the drain yeah. for nothing. Really, for, on the bright side, at least she w had a regen rune going and didn't lose any mana overall. Yeah, but the cooldown is really huge before you get that axe in. She had an axe at five minutes. I don't think we'd be worrying about anything at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't think at this level of play that is really possible, but yeah, it, w it would be very nice. Is it possible yeah. in general? I, I guess if oh, it's, you if it's you're being possible. fed a lot, yeah. Yeah, but if it's happening in competitive play, we've got some serious problems. Yeah, this is like. Or some we've round... got a really good quick pain, <laughs> and I mean like. Th this is some round one qualifier hacking. kind of stuff, so <laughs> probably not yeah. here. But in yeah, the semi-final of a pretty big tournament, I'd say no. So yeah, we've, we've got the Lycan farming, we've got the Centaur farming, could we actually give the edge here, uh, in terms of momentum going into the mid game? I would definitely say Lycan. Uh, Centaur, to me, as a hard carry, is not really that impressive. I feel like Enchantress is going to become more of the 1 or 2 position here, with Razor, and Centaur is still going to be that 3. They're just protecting his farm, because they realize how much this tri-lane would zone him out of XP. And... While Enchantress, of course, can go into the jungle, Centaur doesn't have that luxury. So, there we go. Resummoning the Centaur. The Centaur is like eternal down here. Yeah, might, might have been second Centaur, actually, since 
Uh, maybe yeah, the first maybe. one, I don't know. There has been a centaur camp here next to the lane, that's for sure. I don't know, I'm I'm not trying to be racist against centaurs, but they do all look the same to me. <laughs> so... Well, yeah. got them once again, having a stack contested this time by Nord and Amber both. Nice little block, actually, with the shards, but... Don't feel comfortable continuing. Oh, they, have the the wolves. they have the wolves, they have a snowball here, shards still a little bit longer, but... Yes, centaur, centaur charge will get them out. Oh! Turn well, perhaps the razor, razor comes Chantress. in. Yeah, the gun, that's gonna wreck to come down. And I mean, the impetus is up now. She's been very conservative with her mana, staying a ways out of damage so she doesn't have to use a lot of her heal. Because if you use that heal a lot early times in the lane, unless you have a bottle, you generally have to go back to base before you can fight once you get your level 6. Uh, her mainly focusing on using the centaur to push them away from her, and just using the enchant to keep that duration up. It's very low mana cost. It gives her the mana to really fight right when she gets that impetus, and I mean, this is what you pick enchantress for. Exactly. So now having that Satoru creep, giving that extra bit of region too, plus extra bit of burst damage here if they can, and yeah, of course, the yeah. shockwave, quite long range actually, so we'll be able to get that on target. Also, the untouchable, three points up into it, is that kind of core build that also avoids a lot of the damage that is coming your way, especially if you're considering that all you have against you really is a Lycan and a Daddle who does not have a point up into uh, into the poison touch to try and rest it down a little bit. Yeah. She does pop the heal here, make sure she keeps her creep wave alive. I think she's trying just to push the tower here. Yep. Uh, the 6 HP regen from the satyr is going to be amazing. Uh, that was an enormous buff to Enchantress and Chen. Yeah. Chen and Enchantress, these, these two heroes in particular have been buffed quite a bit. I mean, there's just so many more options. Oh, oh god, yeah, hello. Top. A little bit yep. more backs of damage will have oh. to come out, and that's the Sonic Wave back of cooldown. Do the trick. Gorth tried to right-click once, but obviously that didn't quite work out. Now, on the other hand, if it were any other hero, they wouldn't have been able to get the kill, simply because Enchantress's uh, Untouchable would stop you from finishing her off with right-clicks, and then you'd have a serious problem because, well, you've got to expend your spells, you may not have any spells. Queen of Pain takes care of that with the ulti, but again, that is a big resource commitment just to killing off an offlaner who's already gotten quite a bit out of the lane. If we take a look at level... Uh, if I can get to level here. Yep. What did I do? Level 7. I don't know what you did, but you messed up as usual, Reba. I did it bad. <laughs> Port. But he, uh, he is level 7. Compare that to the Beast Masu, who's level 6. And now he's desperately trying to farm up a camp of his own. Um, yeah, he, he's doing quite well. And also, you have to consider Centaur. Doing quite well. Has his blink taken now, teleporting immediately down to the bottom lane. Smoke up. Together with Goddamn, they're gonna look to make a trade out to put some pressure on this Lycan, like, who's had a decent amount of farm of his own, but not quite as much compared to the middle laner, Radiant as well as the other core hero who's now shape. looking for a tie. Goddamn actually the one leading the charge. Not find anyone just yet, but maybe they will find the Lycan like here in the jungle. It's not quite have his lads finished yet. Mid yeah, and instead they find the sh dazzle here. Can we get the sh no? <laughs> no shell great there, buddy. Yeah, one second. Uh, my steam is completely. Okay, Gorod comes in. Got them. Well, there's the centaur charge coming out. They actually find Amber on the way. Nick will join the party too with the roar on the centaur here. But now Chance was trying to get the right clicks in, but centaur's one falling first. Still, a couple of right clicks being come out, but Gorod's coming in with the bottom blocks on the Abaddon. Goddamn, will end up falling here. No ultimate available just yet. Now, looks like they might want to go on a chance, but Meow, Afro Ninja, enough to scare them off at the very least. But doesn't look like any more counter kills can come their way. Four heroes now here on the sidelines. Actually, yeah, get the stomp off from the enchantment creep. Not this time around, though, with the shallow grave. But look at the damage from the impetus. Are quite enough to bring him down. Bane, I don't know what he was doing here. Nightmares himself up. Still, does not have the brain sap. Still, that's right. <laughs> Right, he's coming out, but just just not enough to keep out of range or inside of range. And one more Sonic Wave will clean up that Enchantress here. Unable to clean up any further kills here, despite diving deep. It's kind of a problem with the Enchantress, right? Either either you get close enough so that the Impetus doesn't do damage, or you get far away enough that she can't oh, actually reach you without Dragonlance. He's taking a lot of damage here, does not have his ult to fall back on, and luckily those wolves will expire, but... Yeah. He already died once. It was about to look pretty bad for Gotham here. Now, we do see an urn pick up for Tusk off that fight. I hate that I missed the fight, but I am back now. I uh, had a bit of a strange problem. 
Well, you're back now. What the heck? Yellow submarine, they pretty much brought down everyone over the course of one or two minutes, so it's a pretty big win for them. Now Gorads playing another Sonic Wave, but getting ever so closer to that Orchid, which is gonna be a decent little decent little item pickup here. Another charge comes in, feeds group now to Gorads, that might have been an over extension there. It does fall to the double edge in the Fiend's grip. Yeah. That's a little swift in counter okay. initiation there, yeah. and that's kind of the strength of the center or, or the starter as well. Just blink in, just have to stampede to get out and reinitiate if possible as quickly as you can. Yeah, and he has been able to secure that blink in the early game, which helps out a ton. That's one of the main problems I have with seeing a centaur very early is you're basically making a wager that you can win the offlane. If you lose the offlane with that hero, you are at a huge deficit. Whereas Slardar, if you lose the offlane, you still have your sprint. You still yep. have your amp damage to help out a lot. Centaur, I think, lacks that utility, but makes up for it in tankiness and damage if he can win. Well, they find Dazzle again. Okay, that was that yeah, wasn't even double edge. It was just pure brain tap here. Four points up into it. Now Amba looking for revenge, possibly Bane. Mike Bess himself got them as well, so the wolves unable to finish the job, so we're timing out anyway. So quickly yeah. pick off, turning into five man tower push, so easy Ravens does it. Mid -towers coming up yeah, and they've got the alpha wolf here. <laughs> That's not an alpha boar. <laughs> it's a boar, he, he stole the boar. <laughs> it's so frustrating actually. <laughs> Beastmaster's like, dude, what, what gives? Go I ahead. thought you were a man's best friend. <laughs> Gorez has the Sonic Wave again, looks like they made one fight, Amba looking for the Snowball oh. in, got him aside, just still does not have his ultimate, so it's kind of a little bit dangerous for him to be there. Nightmare's up and you don't just get burst down with the axes, that was a bit of a misposition there, now Gorez blinking yeah. in a little bit too he's deep. Pretty, he's desperate to get that ultimate and I think he's getting a little too desperate. Uh, if he doesn't get it soon, he's going to be at a huge disadvantage, just because he needs to... Be able to free himself. Snowball, Sonic, Sonic Wave on two. Bane ends up falling. Maybe not. Still kept alive a little bit. Meow is stealing the damage. And Nicarol still alive. Gets a roar off. Bane falls first. But the Stampede comes out. Now Enchantress joining the party. Looking for the right clicks. It's going to be enough here. <laughs> like and trying to right click him down. It's not really possible. Meow at the same time. Able to clean up the tusk in the back. Now everyone else on the run. Got them. Still alive. Or back alive. I don't know. I don't even know what's going on here. Nicarol. Oh, <laughs> they Nick catch Roll. him in the side. He will be. Him. And well, uh, dying, but hey, Gorenz gets a counter kill on the Enchantress. Now got them finally with the Viltman, keeping him safe for the time being. At the same time, Afro Ninja finds a Dazzle. Already oh, used his Shallow Grave a little bit earlier. <laughs> now, Abaddon still fighting up against Gorenz here. The yes! Queen of Pain <laughs> will not get the, the kill. The die comes out. And Gorenz, all he has left to do is just TP out in shame. That was another one of these weird fights that's really, really hard to keep yeah. track of. That was, that was in this general area, if you look at the map. Yeah. <laughs> it's all over HR the place. HR started, or, excuse me, yes, started that off great with the snowball following up the sonic wave just perfectly in there. And it gave them enough damage that Hellraisers were kind of panicking. They did have a good fiend grip that lasted quite a while. Uh, they got a centaur stomp off on two as well. Unfortunately, though, they didn't really have the follow-up damage. Razor was already retreating. Enchantress was already way back in the fight. And by the time she did join, she was able to run them down. Of course, Lycan not able to do any direct damage to her simply because she would just get out of his attack range once he finished his attack, which is the big issue against Enchantress. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if they put a few more points in the Inner Beast Aura just to try and combat that a little bit. It'll negate about a level of the Untouchable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at the same time, uh, without Goritz, without his burst damage, you still, no matter what, you're still going to have a hard time dealing with that Enchantress. So it's exactly. almost almost a mistake of Goritz to just commit it like that, even though he got it on two heroes. Uh, I believe it was an Abaddon and a Bane in the back. Yeah, you've got to make sure you hit Enchantress with yeah. Sonic Wave in the fight, or you are not winning the fight. And that makes me very surprised he's going for an Orchid over something like the Ags. The Ags this game would be great because it's basically your, we're going to keep Enchantress dead forever. Cool. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. If you're not going to run something like Alina, you definitely want to get a low cooldown nuke. And until she gets Ags, Queen of Pain isn't really going to have that. Now, she can go for Ags right after this, and I've got the bugged Lycan. Oh, lovely. <laughs> uh, the headless Lycan, you know? Uh, no, I don't. Well, it's, well, I, it's I interesting. You, I believe you. Yeah. But, uh, of course, 
she can go for the Axe here. I don't see any need for her to really go BKB. Uh, Enchantress Assault will still go through, as will the Fiend's Grip, and uh, pretty much all of Razor's damage. Yep. So. The only thing that you want to consider BKB for would be the Nightmare, just to have that initial setup, Disable, yeah. or an also and Centaur. Centaur. Yeah. Then again, it's I mean, something that you should be able to deal but... with. I feel like against Bane or Beastmaster, BKB is kind of a... It works for a little bit, but once it gets down to five seconds, it, you might I'm as well not have to. Finds already up on the top. Things out, though. Oh, he tries to. <laughs> I was thinking for a second that a Yolo Warrior might actually go on on the Tusk instead. Haste. I will now say, now the wolves are being used very well this game. Difficult. Like, you can see right now, he's got one in the lane just to see like where the creep wave is or whatever, if there's any more heroes coming up. And he's got one following Yolo Warrior just to figure out exactly where he's going. So... I haven't seen him attacking with the wolves very much this game, but I feel like that's perfectly fine because he's using them to zone out the team, and I think you're the warrior sees it now. Yeah, yeah. walk by the tower. Uh, lead it. So. Okay, it stopped. He's gonna try to lead it back into the tower, but again, just micro thinking here from the headless lichen, which is kind of ironic. <laughs> so it looks like Level a submarine. Two hey. Whoa. Yeah. Tower. How okay, did you manage to find like... gold for that? I guess 4, 2, and 7. Does that for you and the old warrior? Caps the blink count. Not a whole lot that you can okay. do. That's full 5 man lineup almost. Up here on he top is out farming the Enchantress. The like Trouble as well. Who... She does have her Dragon Lance, so she's gonna be. What the thought? There's the blink initiation. On to guards. Can they get the follow up here? Bane needs to get in range. There it is. No, can't get the Fiend Scrub off. The Raw comes out to try and keep them away. It's the other submarine on the hunt. Fiend Scrub instead. Onto the task here. Mount. Stealing the damage at the same time. Sonic Wave comes out. Not really hitting on anything. The Snow Wall comes out. Yolo Warrior might end up dying to the punch. No, at least the punch from Nickerel here now. Chance comes in looking for the kill. Nickerel will end the first one to fall. Meow. Still a decent amount of health here. Being right clicked down by Wolves though. Plus the Necro Creeps doing quite a bit of damage. Will he, will he end up falling? Abaddon Shield. Well, yeah, the Abaddon Shield, shield and, and the Weave stopping the tick. It kind of keeps him alive there. Two for one trade at the end of it all. That was almost yeah. very, very bad for either team really. Meow. Alpha Ninja almost ends up dying there. At the end of the day, they only lose the offlaner as well as their support, or kind of four position support, for what's technically the enemy safe laner. I do like the fact that they rotated an Enchantress a bit slowly because she got to enter the fight at basically full health. She got two big impetus hits off on the Beastmaster, and then Queen of Pain silenced her, but she'd already done the damage at that point. And uh, she's going to be able to get a little more form. I'm assuming Ags is going to be next for her, although I would like to see some kind of mana regen come up. Uh, even if it's just an urn, if, assuming they don't have one. I know Tusk does. Uh, oh, no, Bane does. They, they have a Bane, oh, Bane yeah. Yep. Uh, meanwhile, in the bot lane. I think I want to have, want to have a fight here. Do we get the vision? Uh, may not happen. Onto Gotham, Raw onto Meow, but they don't really commit now with Amba coming in. Onto the Bane, not really doing the damage that they need, and now the Stampede will be able to get them out of trouble. Do they want to re-engage? Doesn't really look like it. With, With Razor popping his ult, I don't something. think you want to. Yeah. I mean, you used a lot of other damage, but Razor's still there to kind of zone them out of the fight. Yep. And they do have a gym uh, now on Abaddon to keep track of those wolves, so they'll be less useful as a scouting tool. And also they'll make sure they get rid of D-Wards. It's not a huge deficit for them losing the gym, simply because they know that Beastmaster's got a level 2 Necro Book, and I believe it's going to be level 3 in about 400 gold, so they'll be de-warding anyway, sometime soon. And now Lycan has a level 1. This team knows their strength, and that is pushing. Yep. Pushing, and also and teams I hate are to coming say from it. that. I mean, if Chandra's is, is a little bit not, is not really careful and starts to hit these Necro Creeps, maybe gets uh, found with a little bit of burst damage, and that's actually, <laughs> actually an issue. You shouldn't be playing like that, as of course Enchantress yeah. doesn't have any AOE yeah. to... Uh, she, she can't avoid hitting the Necro Creeps. But then again, if if two sets of level 3 Necros are munching away at your team, yeah. uh, there's some issues in the room, right? If you have the inner beast aura, and of course Lycan with the Feral Impulse benefiting at least his own Necro Creeps. Tremendously. And the Howl. The Howl too, yeah. And the Shapeshift, which uh, I believe... Yeah, it also buffs them up. But does it... it gives um his... Units under his control, the ability to critical strike now, right? Yep. Okay, yeah. Okay, Roshan is now on the platter. Yellow submarine, though. They're wise there is enough to smoke. know what's going on. The smoke comes up. The wolves lead in a charge, but Hellraisers 
They're looking to wrap around here. They see these wards though. And they will know that they've been spotted. This attempt is not really working out as well as they had hoped. Kind of trying to bait like up the Roche Pit and then wrap around yeah. with the ward that they haven't been able to de ward a little bit earlier. Kind of stop them from happening now. The, uh, the weave comes out, shapeshift as well, and now looking to burst down on the Enchantress here. Not quite that, too much stun here. Sonic Wave will miss on Enchantress. Now the turn on his real goal is still trying to bring him down. And they will be able to one for one trade so far. Meow. Doing a decent amount of damage, he's still quite a bit too, so if you can just get to right click, that would be super, super useful. But Abaddon is down, the gem probably somewhere missing. Another two man stun here! They will be able to bring down Lycan, Nickerel, next one on the list, Nord, unable to get the Shallow Grave out because it's just too quick. But at the same time, Gora, he's cleaning house, man! That's a double kill for Lycan with the Wolves helping out still, plus the Necro Reaps and the Gorets getting the rest, and now there's a gem back in the hands of Yellow Submarine. That oh, fight got like on a level 3 Necronomicon when he gets up. So oh even man. though he lost his life, he gained so much. Because that's permanent pushing power coming their way. Uh, the Enchantress creeps plus, or excuse me, the Necrobook creeps plus the Heal Bomb from Dazzle is most of what bursts an Enchantress down. This is one of the things that's really good against her. She has 4 armor. And yes, she's tanky against physical damage, because your main source of physical damage is generally right clicks, and she slows down your attack so much that's not a problem. But, of course, physical spells are going to do a lot of damage to her, yep. and that's a big problem. Well, the big problem is the axe that you were talking about now completed in Gorads after that fight too. So he has mm -hmm. two major items sitting on top of the net worth chart, and... Alpha Ninja is good as he's been doing with stealing the damage and tr trying to be the tanky guy in the middle of the fight. He's not quite there yet. The Sanjin Yasha kind yeah. of starting to be less and less effective now as time goes on. He's working on his Assault Cuirass. Once that comes up, tables may turn a little bit once again in Hellraiser's favor, but at that point... And that's going to help Enchantress a lot as well, because the low armor I was just min mentioning will get buffed up by 5 thanks to the AC. And... Uh, the attack speed as well, of course. So, not that she's lacking in attack speed right now, as you can see. It will lose the mid tower. Also, Meow, that last fight with the ultimate, managed to get three kills. That was quite a big fight for him. Uh, he's still a little bit far away from this AC, Hello? farther than I'd like, but. Yeah, oh. Where was that? A Bane? It was Bane on the warding mission. <laughs> He placed the wall yeah. up here earlier. He placed the wall up on high ground near the ancients, so he got spotted out. I just, I feel like you dying there just says, guess where I just put a ward? <laughs> and I'm really surprised they didn't deward it. I mean, they have a gym. Not but surprised though. They are going to get a rush. opportunity to get this rush at the same time, yeah. So 10 seconds down, still on the bane. Plenty of ways to bring down this rush quickly here. They have a medallion on Dazzle. They have so many summons, so much attack speed as well. They crawl only one point up into the inner beast, but still. Does make yeah. a difference, and of course, Lycan, so much physical damage coming out from his summons, even without the shapeshift. Yeah, the warrior is going to TP out now. He's working on an Ags, which I really like. If you can time that oh, around yeah. the Queen of Pain ultimate, of course, you'll negate most of the damage. It's 60%. Yeah. So yep. think Ursa, and then put a little more damage on him. Ursa with Mask of Madness and his ult up. <laughs> but on everyone, not just uh, yeah, himself. on everyone. Pretty damn strong, Meow yeah, has to be careful not to get caught out here, actually, it's Anma sitting on the side. They have the vision from the Hawk, and now... Well, got them, Yolo Warrior sitting in the back as well, smoked up. Looking to get initiation first here. Going in deep, there's the Roar. On to Meow, but no real follow-up as Hellraisers now. Look to disengage, but there's a snowball here, a little bit of a misplay perhaps, Anba! Looks to be right-click down, the stun comes out. There's the, there's the creeps, there's the Sonic Wave. But now Hellraiser looks like they might damage. lose Yolo Warrior. He's still be kept alive for the time being, but not enough to get on the stomp off. But still not of cooldown yet, so just a one for one trade, but still in favor of Yellow Serpent. And they claim the tower too, and now will still the Aegis in their pocket. They could think about going high ground, but they're thinking, alright, let's clean the up two. the first year, the last year twos first. Yeah. yeah, they can get that very easy. They're forcing uh, Razor to move in next to the tower to give it that AC aura and slow them down. That's one of the things that made it take them a little while to get the tower as well as the glyph. But knowing the glyph's down, uh, uh, which link, I don't like... Silence, got them. Oh. Just a little bit of exchange now, Meow, with the Nightmare on top of this, uh, on top of the Link, doing quite a lot of damage here. We have to be super careful to Shadow Grave just in case another one, another impetus comes their way. Now, Sonic Wave wants to get off cooldown. Big, yeah, big damage towards Razor now. 
Almost being right clicked down by the wolves here. He has to be super careful. Needs to yeah, have some region, but now, right now, well also Gorth, someone take it off. Someone take it off. Is there a fiend script? No, no fiend script. So, oh, no. Gorth should actually be fine. They do not have They've any further the lockdown here. Creep. Also. <laughs> okay. With your four shield top. I was confused for a moment, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Can I actually chat them again and refresh the duration? I don't think so. That would, that would uh, be I've... broken. You bit, can to refresh broken. the duration of your enchant, but it won't refresh the duration it's yeah, actually alive, exactly. so... I don't think, anyway. If, if it does, that is a serious bug. Yeah. Alright, Hellraisers, they at least repel this assault. But yeah. the game's still getting hard. Like, and this is a point where he does a lot of tower damage. So if you do lose one or two heroes, and you don't do a dent in yellow submarine, you're gonna lose buildings. And Queen of yeah. Pain with that axe, level 3 ultimate, is at a power spike right now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they need to find some extra tankiness. Enchantress is working on axe, but of course, not having an extra item slot, unless there's something on the courier. Yeah, she's picked up the Staff of Wizardry, which I would much rather her grab the Ogre Club, and even just drop her wand and pick that up, just to have the extra max HP. They are gonna clear through some Ancients real quick here, which shouldn't take too long. Lycan Wolves will spot them out, though. It's also Blink Deck is coming out in both Beastmaster after level 3 Necro as well as the Tusk, his first major item here, if you will, after the after the Earth. So initiation is real for both of them now. Oh, there's double damage here. They need to oh. deny now it. Oh, no, he doesn't oh. get it, Gorat! And now the Sun's up into Bane means that he can't really help. They will blow up Meow already low from this jungle farming and stuff like that. So two easy kills coming their way, and that should be dead here too. Just as simple as that. Yeah. A little too much greed there, coming out from Hellraisers. Trying to get the double damage on their carry, I'd like, but against heroes like Queen of Pain, you have to be more careful. Uh-oh. What? Mystic Staff dropped where? Please tell me that's in the fountain. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Okay, Queen of Pain has it now, so it must have just been <laughs> on the ground nearby. I thought, like, somebody on Hellraisers had bought one and stole the stomp! He barely <laughs> slowed down, though. <laughs> Well, uh, that's one of these instances where you shouldn't really be hyping it up because Goddamn now with his ultimate trying to lay yeah. a little bit too, but that's just what I was talking about. Two heroes dead, easy tower, easy two towers, plus a set of racks in this case because like it's just that. So, Bane, what are you doing? Oh no, teleport from outside the base into the loving arms of five heroes. Alright, that's, that's gotta be some tilt move right there already. Yeah, just that got was... caught on the wrong side of the shards, but still, you shouldn't have been out that far anyway. No. He and TP'd outside here. the base, right here to the flag. The mm. I want a that is, some, yeah. that is almost a rookie mistake there. Gotta call it as it is. I mean, I, I do it all the time, because I'm stupid, but... Yeah, but we are rookies, uh, these guys yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> so, a little bit unfortunate here. They do get closer to the Axe and the Enchantress. With one Rex down, still not out of it. But they have to make something count. They, they need to get maybe the next Roche, maybe a couple of pickoffs. Especially on Gorat here, try and slow him down, try and get that big bounty. Uh, and against the, the rat squad of yes, Enchantress is actually not carrying a TP at the moment. Now I know that she's trying to finish her Ags and she's very close to it. I would still... You need a TP, just in case. Lycan can get to your tower in a matter of seconds and take it down in a matter of seconds. You can't be that ballsy up against them. And now Ashiva's up on Queen of Pain, you think Enchantress is going to slow my attacks? Well, I'm going to slow yours too. <laughs> we'll just play a slow game here. It's fine. Since we're speaking about Agnum Scepters though, Uba, he's got his. So that might actually be the one thing that can make a difference. Um, one thing though, that they have to try and control... Uh, Yolo Warrior, a task, uh, ah, Centaur, okay. Centaur, Centaur, yeah. Thank you. Uh, one thing that they have to try and get a, get a grip on though, is the map control. They bought a secondary gem on Goddamn. The, the first one, I believe, is still on the Queen of Pain. Um, yeah. So... Oddly enough, no they're on the high ground over here. Yeah. Oh god, there's oh, a roar. The roar! Yeah, can, get, can they have the follow up though? Lycan is there, Nightmare, BKB, and that'll stop that from happening. N another quick burst from the Sonic Wave will say no to the enchantment. Punch axe. up on the goddamn. They slow him down while Lycan just deals with the Razor. Fiend Scoop comes out, but the base is all alone. It's three heroes down and just run over Hellraisers, and that's a good game indeed. 31 minutes it took them. Falls out the GG. Yeah, that's just a death push, that's just a Queen of Pain being the solution to the Enchantress here before she can really do the damage. Yeah, but a very well played game by both sides, I think. 
I feel like Hellraisers had a strategy in mind, and even though it didn't fit the game they were the strategy they were up against, I think they stuck to their strategy, which I can't applaud, but at the same time, you've got to be able to adapt during your draft. And I felt like they hung on to their Enchantress pick until it was way too late, and then couldn't really make it work that well. She did. They did play well, though, with what they had, so... Uh, yeah, we're definitely not out of it just yet, as it is a best of three, they have one more chance to tie up the series and then perhaps make it a 2-1 victory here if they want to face up against Brodota tomorrow to fight for that $2,500 prize pool. But yeah, that game number two will be coming up in just a few moments time, so don't go anywhere. 